first and foremost, active. That's the first step. You save. That's the second step. And then the third step is you buy your first asset, whatever that is. Don't make it be necessarily, unless you're really, really on top of your game, don't make it be something so big that it's going to take you forever to accomplish. You want to be able to get fast results. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It is Chris and Cole with Life 180. And uh, today we're going to be talking about if you had a thousand dollars in a bank right now and you're starting just with a thousand dollars, what are the three moves that you need to make here um, to ultimately achieve the objectives that you're looking to achieve? And so um, I think this is going to be a fun video because there's, there's a lot of people, um, you know, who are kind of getting started right now. And, and I think, Cole, I think if we, if we kind of take a step back and, and look at this uh, from a foundational level, you know, I've, I've done the videos on the Life 180 Pyramid and the importance of financial structure and all these different things. And it really comes down to the fact that, like, let's face it, if you have a thousand bucks, sadly, realistically, you're ahead of a lot of people in this country. Um, but sadly, like, you're probably nowhere near where you really want to be. And so um, the question is, what are the steps like? Where are you now and where are you looking to go? And, and ultimately what's holding you back from getting there? And so I think, I think in this scenario, when you look at the fact that you have a thousand dollars, we have to first and foremost, think about like, what do we need that money to do for us, right? And, and, as, and as a consumer, as a person who's looking to save and achieve an objective and reach financial freedom, because remember, it's not about retirement. It's not about some date far off, in the, far off down the road when we're talking about cash flow hacking. We're talking about investing for cash flow and investing in a system that's going to allow you to build a higher quality of life and more financial freedom faster along the way. And you know, it, having only $1,000 in the bank if you implement a system, you know, I, it's really important, I think, to like understand that you have to walk before you run, right? Like, and you have to understand that um, you have to have active income going into these things before you can actually create passive income. And I think there's so much talk around passive income because there's such an attraction to it and people want it and the lifestyle and the freedom and everything that kind of comes along with it. Um, I'm going to just be really, really straight with people that if you only have $1,000 in your bank account, the first thing that you're going to have to do is kind of take a step back and say, okay, I'm going to have to find a side hustle, a business, a something, some way to create more active income in my life, or a way to, to reposition the active income that I do have currently. And I'm going to have to save a higher percentage of that money with uh, the purpose of saving to invest. Now, that said, it's, it's one of those things where um, a lot of people, like if you're working a job and you're making 50 grand a year or 60 grand a year, or whatever your income is, even 100 grand a year, um, chances are you're living up to a high percentage of, of, of what you're doing. You're consuming most of your income, you know, in one way, fashion or another, right? And so what I've found to be true is it's easier to go out and to try to create an extra 10 to 15 to 20 grand a year in, we'll just call it a side hustle. You know what I mean? And through an extra form of revenue. And then with the goal of saving the overwhelming majority of the income created through that active income. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. <clears throat> totally does. And so, okay. So we're talking about the thousand dollars. You're free and clear mm -hmm. $1,000 in yep. the, uh, okay. So hit, 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 hit us with the, um, the title. Again, three so, yeah, things. Yeah. So if you have the, three the things, three, if you have a thousand dollars. Yep. Your three moves you need to make if you have a thousand dollars in the bank right now. So you got a thousand dollars in the bank. Now your thousand dollars is unencumbered. It's free and clear. Mm -hmm. It's here's the interesting thing is that that thousand dollars got into your bank account for a reason. Mm -hmm. It got into your bank account. It's free and clear. It's unencumbered. It's likely not burning a hole in your pocket. You probably want to build on that $1,000. You're disciplined enough, that big giant capital D word, you're disciplined enough to be able to get the $1,000. Yep. And so now it's a matter of moving into that mindset. Well, do I want $2,000 or do I want $10,000? Because mm -hmm. we know that it's easier to 10X than it is 2X. Mm -hmm. It's just a mindset. And so okay. now how do you how do you 10X that money? Yep. Um, and, and you talked about, so one strategy that you talked about is um, a side hustle. Yep. Um, you know, how, how can you conservatively 
grow that money? What do you, I, I actually Googled side hustles a little while ago and some people are right. doing, and they literally are suggesting for people, um, they will say, do you have a lawnmower? Do you own a lawnmower? Um, can you rent out your lawnmower in your neighborhood to your, to, you know, I'm kind of thinking about this stuff and I go, I never would have thought about that. I never would have think, instead of going and taking a chattel or an asset that I have and going around my neighborhood, putting an ad on uh, Kijiji or Craigslist, whatever it is that you, whatever platform, yeah. Facebook, whatever, yeah. you, whatever you use and saying, hey, I have a lawnmower to rent out. Uh, totally. Would you like to borrow my lawnmower for five bucks? Well, that's, now you have a thousand and five dollars. I mean, it sounds really silly, but what version of that do you have in your life? Do you have a kayak? Right. Do you have a canoe? I mean, is there something you can, is there some way to create passive income? Because now renting out that lawnmower, you're not, it's not your time because time is, is, is non-elastic. Um, one thing I'd love to hear you talk about, Chris, is uh, say taking that thousand dollars lump sum and, and, and leveraging it. I mean, what, what, would you, what would you do to, instead of renting out the lawnmower, what would you do to light that thousand dollars on fire and 10 exit? Well, that's, that just becomes, that becomes, it's not even renting out the lawnmower. It's like, what can you, what can you take that thousand dollars to create a cash flowing business for yourself? You could create your own side hustle. I mean, I think people think of side hustles and they think of like becoming an Uber driver or a Lyft driver. Babysitting. Or babysitting. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, yeah. but the reality is like, if, if you were to like, depending on where you live and, and like, you know, what your skill sets and like what you enjoy and all these things are, because I think all that has to play into it. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are all sorts of, you could take a thousand dollars and if you just researched different ways to invest a thousand dollars, um, and, and, and sometimes like, you know, that could be going out and buying a lawnmower and, and like starting to mow lawns at a hundred bucks a pop, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. depending on how big the lot yards are and everything that you're doing, you know, in, 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 in how much you want to earn per hour and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to no matter whatever, whatever you're doing, you're taking that and you're, you're shifting it into active income, but you need to save that extra money. You're not, you're not, you know, like if, if you go out and you take the thousand dollars and you buy equipment with it to go do a job and that job creates more cash flow, And let's say that creates $250 of cash flow a week for you as a side hustle on the weekend, right? Now, a month later, you're back to your thousand bucks and you have this extra 25% week on week cash on cash return, right? Like, which is pretty mm -hmm. awesome. And so in a month extra, you have 2000, a month extra, you got 3000 and like, and then it becomes scalable, right? Like, so I have just, just kind of like one of the things that I really enjoy, and, and this is like a little side note, and I guess it's kind of a little off topic, but it, you know, we always talk about like cash flow real estate, right? Like a lot of people getting to the place where you think you can save enough money to get your first property seems so far down the road. It seems like almost unattainable, right? Um, you know, mm -hmm. for most people and, mm -hmm. and it's not, if you execute, like we'd be talking about, but the reality is like, I have a, a, a travel trailer that I pull behind my Jeep and it's called the black series patron. It's about a $30,000 trailer. I paid, I got a policy loan for it. I dealt with it that way. And I paid 19,900 bucks for it. Right. Because, and that's, Another conversation, I've done a video on it. It's awesome. It's, and it's pure leverage. I was able to literally get a 33% discount on this thing simply because I was able to do a policy loan and, and pay cash when nobody else was willing to. You know, They were willing to finance it for me at 0% at $27,000, but because I paid cash for them, uh, I was able to do that. And think about it this way. Now I was able to go out and rent that trailer on Outdoorsy. And this is a lifestyle thing because Cole will tell you, everybody that knows me will tell you, like I'm obsessed with the outdoors and going to my Jeep and hitting the mountains and doing all that stuff. So with my kids and all that stuff, it's a lifestyle thing for me, but I'm a big believer in, in, in intertwining lifestyle and cash flow, right? Like, like if you can, if I can buy an asset that's going to cash flow and increase my lifestyle, how freaking cool is that? You know what I mean? Like that's intentional living folks. You know what I mean? Like I'm able, like I have this trailer now. And by the way, I had it listed on Outdoorsy. I, when I was in Costa Rica on my trip, I rented it out in just on that trip alone, I made $2,200 on this trailer, right? People renting it out and, and cash flowing it. And this year alone, I've made over a 26% return cash on cash return on this trailer just this year, right? Plus I've been able to use it for my family and enjoy life. Like that's like, I don't, for a lot of people, being able to create an extra $5,000 a year, $4,500 a year 
in cash flow on, on an asset like that is pretty freaking cool, right? Like, and, and, and it's so doable. And so this is the thing you, like we talk about buying cash flow assets, getting there is one thing, but like figure out what do you enjoy? Like my brother-in-law just is an instance, he's really into like dirt bikes, right? Like dirt bike tours, buying, fixing and flipping dirt bikes. Like it's his jam. He just loves it. Right. And so he would be a perfect example of saying, Hey, Brad, like, why don't we get you into a situation where we, you have a thousand bucks, let's save you up some money, work actively, build it up so you can buy a dirt bike, put some money into that dirt bike, fix it, flip it, clear a couple thousand dollars, repeat that process and keep doing that. And that's your business. You know what I mean? Like once again, it comes down to what's your skill set. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what it, that, that's all this comes down to. At the end of the day, it, the, the biggest thing, if you have a thousand dollars in your account, you have to understand you're not where you want to be. And where you want to be is, is complete passive income, right? That's the pinnacle. That's the dream. And so, but the reality, there's a gap. And so what you have to do is you have to create active income and save and create to fill that gap in. And once you get there, then you have to buy your first cash flow asset. And then you let that compound, right? So first and foremost, active, that's the first step. You save, that's the second step. And then the third step is you buy your first asset, whatever that is. Don't make it be necessarily, unless you're really, really on top of your game, don't make it be something so big that it's going to take you forever to accomplish. You want to be able to get fast results. You know, if, if you pick the target like 20,000 bucks, it's not that hard to actively create $20,000. If you think it is, give me a call. I'll smack some sense into you. Like it's, like, it's not that hard. I promise you. It, it, it takes a little discipline. It takes a little focus. Um, it takes a little drive. There's no doubt about that. But if you have a skill, if you have a passion, I can pretty much show you how to monetize that. I mean, legitimately, like show you how to monetize that. It's kind of a gift of mine. So like, you know, I, I would say that you, you actively create, you save with the purpose of investing, and then you buy your first cash flow asset. And then as you do that, then you allow that to compound. And while you're allowing this to compound, you're repeating this whole process all over again, right? And then you are able to pick up your second cash flow asset and third. And that, then eventually, very much sooner than later, you're going to be able to get into bigger assets, producing more cash flow and more stuff. And the key to all this is you're not tapping into this in the moment to live on lifestyle. You're, you're leveraging this to compound your passive income to compound, you know, your ability to grow. And if you do it in the right way, you're going to do it in areas that you enjoy, kind of like I did with the travel trailer, you know, where real estate properties, all that stuff are great, you know, but there's nothing wrong with sprinkling in something like a trailer, or, you know, if you want to buy a, you know, an S5, you know, car or, or a Tesla or something like that, and you could rent it out on Turo, or, you know, like I know a lot of people who are doing stuff like that you know, buying Airbnb properties, doing stuff like that, vacation rentals, like if it, like all these different things are options that are completely legitimate and viable, um, but they're all, it's just a matter of scalability and, and like how fast can you get into them? And I'm a big believer, it's the practice. It doesn't matter if it's a trailer. It doesn't matter if it's, a, you know, fixing and flipping dirt bikes. It doesn't matter if it's a rental property an Airbnb or whatever. The, it, it's a matter of practicing and implementing the, the practice of getting the movement of money and creating passive income. You know what I mean, Cole? Like to me, that's, that's what this is all about. But like, Cole, what are, what are your thoughts around all that? Yeah. I mean, the thing that comes up for me hearing you talk about, I mean, all that is the actually the exact opposite. So the risk of not doing everything that you're saying, the risk of not thinking creatively about how to two X or, more importantly, 10X. I mean, don't even think about 2Xing your thousand dollars. Just take your mind and go straight to 10Xing it. And just kind of, if you have that mindset, you will achieve that goal. So the risk of not doing everything that Chris is talking about is uh, this, this thing called inflation. Uh, Leaving your thousand dollars parked in your bank account is doing the exact opposite. Every day, it's eroding. January, the inflation rate of 2021 was 1.4%. Uh, September, I don't even know what October is, but I know in September was 5.4%. That's gross. 1.4 to 5.4%. 
this is basic CPI consumer price index uh, data. This is yeah. like national, this is systemic. So your thousand dollars, you're not two Xing or 10 Xing your $1,000. You're doing the exact opposite. So to two X to, to turn one thousand into two thousand at a five point four inflation rate, um, what do you really need to do to be able to get to the goal? Um, yeah. You got to cut a few more lawns, or you got to rent out your trailer a few more times, yeah. or you know buy another trailer. Or hey, what about this? Here's an idea. This is something you could do. You could take the one thousand dollars and you could lend it to somebody. You could mm-hmm. you could drop a contract. You could lend that one thousand uh, dollars to somebody. You can even leverage it before you lend it. If you have good credit, you can even kind of go to a bank and say, essentially, I have a thousand dollars in the bank. How much will you give me if I if you can collateralize this one thousand dollars? That one thousand dollars, if it's invested into something like, oh, geez, let me think. Um, no, I didn't say invested. Maybe I say it was stored. Say, no, X out the invested, not invested, stored. Say, I really like to think it's an investment. I fall, I fall, I, I'm guilty like everybody else. Stored in something called like a whole life insurance contract. Say, just happen to be stored in the whole life insurance contract. Oh, you were to leverage it and lend it to somebody out of the whole life insurance contract, lend it to someone who wanted to uh, say, put a down payment on a home. Oh, hey, you know, I, I have, I have um, I'm a thousand dollars short on a down payment for my home. The bank won't give me my house unless I come up with an extra thousand dollars. I'm a first time home buyer. Hey, Chris, could you lend me a thousand bucks so I can so I can get my home? Sure, but it's going to cost you 12%. Yeah. Well, inflation is at 5.4. I'm charging you. I trust you. I know you. I like you. I know you're going to pay me back. You're going to pay me back a thousand bucks in a year. I'm going to earn 12% mm-hmm. on it. And it's still pumping away in the life insurance contract and doing all these other fantastic things. Yep. So, I mean, I, one of the, I think we had three, right? There was three things. Yeah. Did we even include life insurance in, in the, in the uh, well, thing? you know, life insurance is part of the savings plan, right? Like, so when, when I, when I say you not want part, not part of the investment plan. Right. Life insurance is, is so where, where is your money being? I guess that like when viewers, like when, you know, when the viewers like tune into the channel, is it just assumed that their money's should be sitting in a whole life insurance well, contract? I don't know if, I don't know if it is or isn't, but I think with a lot of people, probably yes, but, but it comes down to step one is create more active income, right? Step yeah. two is to save that active income. So the question then becomes, where's the best place to save the active income? Well, a properly designed whole life insurance contract is just the best place. It's a savings account on steroids. And when you see that and you understand that and it's completely leveraged and you understand you're investing that money, the only part I will say is you're investing into a system. It's not an investment, but you are investing into a mm-hmm. system, right? Like mm-hmm. that's the idea. And so yeah. in, in doing that, um, you know, you're saving the money in a whole life contract instead of a traditional savings account because yeah. Once you understand why you're putting the money there, it's like the biggest no-brainer in the world. Okay, so the que- the question then for you is when your money when your money's in a life insurance contract yeah. as a savings account. Yep. Um, what's it doing? What you know, talk to us about inflation. What what's it doing? I mean, what what has the dividend done relative to inflation over the last, yeah. you know, 100 yeah, years? Yeah, I mean, so right like, now, right now, I mean, inflation this year is is interesting. Cole just said it's 5.6% right now. Um and that just is what it is. I think it's going to get worse before the end of 2022 here. I think 2022, oh, heck yeah. I think it's going to get worse in 2022. Um, yeah. dude, I just filled up my gas tank today on my Jeep and yeah. normally it costs me $48. It cost me $67 today. 67. Okay. So let's break it down. So January 1.4, here the inflation, January 1.4, uh, January, February 1.7, February, March 2.6, April 4.2. 5%, um, June, July, 5.4, 5.4, August, 5.3, and then 5.4. Yeah. So um, which way is it going? So here's the thing about a life insurance contract, properly designed banking system, call it what you will. Mm-hmm. The uh, Historically, if you look at the consumer price index versus the dividend that life insurance companies are paying is that they mirror. So inflation goes up, the dividend goes up. Inflation goes down, the yep. dividend goes down. So yep. is this a hedge to inflation? Absolutely. So now if you think about the 12, you lent your thousand dollars to your friend who wanted to buy their home, they're paying you 12%, your money sitting in a bank account is eroded by 5.4%. You're really making 6.6% technically on the money. But if your money's coming out of a life insurance contract, the inflation piece is nullified and you're taking the 12%. So you're on a fast track by doing that. I mean, plus you get life insurance actually out of the deal and a bunch of other amazing things. 
Um, but you're actually fast tracking your, your, your progress to that mentality of turning a thousand dollars into, into $10,000. Well, you're, and you haven't even invested it yet, but you've in invested, you're, you're vested in the life insurance in contract and you're in it. You're yeah. putting your money in a vehicle that is inflation protected essentially. And, and, it, and it's not necessarily guaranteed to be protected by more than inflation every single year. Like for instance, this year, um, if you were with a lot of the carriers that I would suggest using, like you're talking about a five and a quarter percent dividend, right? Like, so if inflation is 5.6, you're, you're a little behind the eight ball, right? Like you are losing a yeah, little Yeah, it's bit. not, I mean, year over year, it's not, I mean, it doesn't calculate or correct right. on a monthly or daily basis. Right. Because the life insurance companies, um, they tank. basically announce their dividend annually, right? Like a once a year. So, right. And yeah. so what's going to happen though, is you're still way further ahead than what you'd be doing if you got a 10th of a percent in a savings account, right? Mm -hmm. and, and plus all the tax advantages and everything, the tax-free growth, tax-free access, everything that goes along with it. Right. So that's, that's one thing. But then the, the, the function of, if you understand how dividends work and you understand how the fixed income markets work and, and how CPI kind of in uh, CPI and inflation affects the bond markets, the treasury markets, all these different things, right? And so that's what the price of money in the fixed market is based on. And that's how dividend rates are ultimately calculated inside of these major mutual whole life of companies. And so when, when, you, when you look at that, as inflation goes up, that's going to put, it's actually, you know, it's a bad thing for the markets in a lot of ways, but it's really good for savers, you know, because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to make it so the the fixed income options out there in the industry right now are going to help savers be able to get better returns with less risk right yeah and, and um, i think it's important to kind of help kind of like unpack a little bit about you know what fixed income actually is for a lot of viewers and it sounds like a confusing thing when you think about fixed income bonds or debt mm -hmm. you think about that trifecta of yeah. financial strategy it's very confusing when people just talk about stocks it's yeah. very straightforward they take an alpha they take a spread they take an arbitrage yeah. on on the stock when you talk about fixed fixed income bonds um, uh, um or debt you're talking about a completely different financial strategy and a financial tool you'll, you'll hear wealthy people or sophisticated people mm -hmm. talking about making money on debt yeah and when you when, you, when you're making money on debt now you're you're in the bond market you're in you're in fixed income and you're what you're actually you're actually doing is you're you're actually making money on the debt the the interest rate that's mm -hmm. being collected from the debt and these are companies like these are traditionally speaking companies like banks, life insurance companies, for example, have uh, fixed income from banks and bonds from banks. That's essentially how life insurance companies make their money. They take your premium dollars and they lend it to banks. Yep. That's one of the, the and then and then banks in turn yep. go and do something called buy Boli, bank owned life insurance. And it's mm -hmm. just this perfect cycle. So the, the thing that's propping up um, the, um, and, and the thing that's avoiding the worst case scenario, like the catastrophic systemic failure, mm -hmm. ultimately are life insurance companies, because they are the ones that are not fractionally reserved. They're not quantitatively eased. Um, yep. And they're, they actually, for every dollar that they lend the bank, they have two in a liquid asset like gold or real estate uh, before they actually enter into the bond fixed income or debt markets. So. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it really, when you understand all the moving parts and understand the concepts of the different tiers of assets that banks use, um, how, how assets are, are um, you know, according to the fractional reserve banking system are kind of allocated and how banks are able to leverage different types of assets and, and you understand what's going on, you start to look at what we're talking about and you're like, holy crap, how have I never been told this before? Like legitimately, right. it becomes like, this light bulb moment and you're like, oh my gosh, like, why doesn't everybody know this? Why are they not teaching this in school? And honestly, to me, it's criminal that they're not teaching it in school. And Dude, I, I've been in, I've been a founder in business my entire life. I'm 48 years old. I literally just figured this stuff out like a few years ago. Yeah. Like they don't teach it in nope. entrepreneur founder school. Nope. Right. It's like, crazy, man. Why it's, crazy. it's, it's just, it's mind blowing. And it doesn't even need to be mathematical you just have to understand kind of like the flow even if it just looks kind of like a very simple kind of flow chart uh, where there's a few lines a few circles a few squares a couple arrows um, that's all you just need to know the kind of the, the flow you know the, the pool of how it's moved around yeah and I mean you don't need an, an economics degree really which I definitely do not have 
Well, <laughs> you, know, you don't, you but, don't. And, and like, I guess getting back to this and wrapping this up because, you know, we kind of got off topic a little bit, but I think it, we got off topic. We never that. do that. No, exactly. I know but <laughs> it, we got off topic in, in, and I think a beautiful way because it explains, it, it, it gets into a lot more depth and, you know, behind everything, but kind of coming back to the title and, and what the idea behind this video is, is like, if you have a thousand dollars in your bank account, what do you do? And the, the idea behind that thousand dollars of what you're doing with it and why it matters to you is you're somebody who has a thousand dollars and you've obviously worked diligently to get that thousand dollars there and you're doing it with a purpose. You're doing it with specific intent. And so I would, I would encourage you to think about what is that specific intent? Where do you want to go? What do you need that money to do for you? What do you want that money to do for you? Right. And and what's the gap between where you are now and what the next step is in that journey for you, where you want to be. Now, that next step for most people is you need more money, right? And, and realistically, how long it's going to take you there to get to that next level is all based on you and your ability to create more active income. You know, So I would say, first and foremost, leverage that $1,000 if you have to, to potentially create that extra income. But in, in, in whatever you create an active income, save that with the mindset of investing and protecting yourself, right? And where you're going to save that is a whole life policy. Get to a cash flow asset as quickly as possible. Compound that. Keep the active income going. Compound all that together. You're going to get results way faster than what you, you think you could possibly do. If you understand the idea of all this, you can understand that rate of return and you chasing a big rate of return in the marketplace is the biggest lie that you're going to be chasing. Like your ability to create and compound and control is your greatest gift. It really truly is. And if you do it the right way, those are the three things that you need to focus on. And if you focus exclusively on doing what I just said, we could, you could literally ignore everything else we just said in this video, even though I think it's really good. Um, you know, and you just think about that and understand that your ability to create and control and compound is, is everything. It's everything for you achieving takes, a fast result in your it's, life. It's so true, man. And I mean, all it takes is people to do like a quick little mm -hmm. bit of research. I mean, you're dropping some science here. You know, people talk about leverage. You talk about leverage. You talk about compounding. Yeah. Um, you know, really, it doesn't take much to search on Google, you know, low risk ways to leverage. Totally. Um, what is what is compounding? Well, compounding is doing one of three things, right? It's working for you, against you, or you're missing out on the opportunity to have it work for you. So that may, may make it even more confusing. But the point is, is that there has to, you have to be on the right side of compounding. You yeah. have to be on the and if you're if you're not leveraged, you're not in control. And but unfortunately, leverage has carries, um, especially in you know fiat markets, for example, mm -hmm. it carries with it. Um, you, you get wrecked in markets on, on leverage, but that's not the type of leverage that we're talking about. We're talking about l low or no risk leverage, and right. it does exist. This is why Life 180 exists. We're here yep. ultimately to share with you how you can actually have your cake and eat it too. 100%. Love it, man. So guys, if you found value in that video, uh, please smash that like button. Um, make sure if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, hit the bell. That way you get notified every time Cole and I uh, do a new video. Uh, and, um, I tell you what we have, check out the end screen here. We got a couple videos for you, a playlist. that's going to be uh, designed to kind of help you continue this journey. If you are somebody who's looking to implement, execute, figure out how to create cash flow, get plugged into the community, uh, you know, make sure, make sure you check out the links in the description below, get on, have a conversation with somebody from life 180. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to serve here to help you reach your objectives, get clear. You, there's, you can set up a free clarity call, um, all these things going on. Um, check out the, um, the video in the pinned description below that explains cash flow hacking. Um, because I'm telling you, when you understand the idea of cash flow hacking, it will change the way that you view your personal financial strategy. So anyway, that's it. Cole, thanks for being here, brother. Thank Good you. Be back on the horn with you. And uh, guys, have a blessed, inspirational day, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.